Well, Benjamin Franklin once said, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Oh, and this is so true for any Lean or 5S event. What's key here is that we need to focus the training and the team on the process or the area, not the department. Remember, Lean is about process focus, not department focus. What about training? There must be some element of formal classroom training to discuss the purpose of 5S and what the entire process is all about. The training should be done by someone who is qualified and has a great deal of hands-on 5S experience and also has excellent presentation skills. Wherever possible, hands-on exercises, before and after photos, videos, and simulations should be used to make the training room more interactive and more interesting. Remember, the goal must be to complete 5S all the way through the fifth S, not just the second or third S. And then as we start the process, oftentimes I look at the bigger picture, the things that are on the outside, the bigger items, and I start in a corner and I work my way one direction or the other. If we get up to a cabinet, I might briefly look in the cabinet, ask them if the whole cabinet as an entire entity is used, and if it is, we might write it down as an action to 5S the cabinet at a later date. Now there's also a red tag area that we need to identify, or a lay down area. And that lay down area or red tag area where we move all the items that will be tagged needs to also be identified. In some companies there's been two lay down areas. Uh, there's been a local one right next to the area of focus and then there's more of a centralized lay down area that will eventually be moved to. Regardless of that, it needs to be identified and clear to everyone involved that that's a red tag area. What are some of the physical and logistical needs that we need during a 5S event? Well, of course we need a camera. We need to get that camera for before and after pictures. Other things that we'll need, of course, are forklifts or other material handling devices, pallets that might be used in a temporary area or a red tag area, uh, but we need the material handling devices. Uh, a walking tape measure or a pedometer, perhaps, is another possibility. And the reason we might use that is in the second step set in order, sometimes we draw what's called a spaghetti diagram. And uh, we actually follow some, someone around uh, during their normal process. And we're trying to get an idea of all of their patterns and where they walk and then we, we start questioning and say, well, why does he have to walk 50 feet for this item? Well, as part of set in order, maybe we should have it back over here. Now, what about job roles and responsibilities? We have an action recorder. That's the person who's gonna be recording actions on the, on the flip chart. Of course, we need uh, qualified material handlers to move stuff in and out, if necessary. We need that local area expert. Oh, that's a very important person to the facilitator. That's the person who really knows about the items. Uh, that red tag area, we need to uh, uh, disposition all the items within a certain period of time. Again, that might be 30 days, it might be two weeks, but we need someone responsible for that uh, and make sure that everything is moved out of that red tag area and it is gone within whatever time period we agree. It's extremely important because otherwise all we're doing is moving stuff from one area to another area and we can't allow for that. So if the organization already has this 5S audit form, as part of an existing sustain or an existing 5S process, then we can go ahead and use that or we can use a generic one to evaluate that targeted area. By doing so, we might break up the team into smaller groups of two to three people. And then we dispatch them to the area to evaluate the focus process in small teams within an allotted time. And then we come back as a group, we debrief as a team, discuss the results and the differences, discuss any issues with the audit form itself, and discuss the importance of calibrating the assessors. Now, calibration needs to eventually be done. I've done that with some organizations in which we go evaluate in small teams certain areas and then come back and discuss. And if we're off on the evaluation significantly, so let's say we're evaluating on a one to five scale, and one team says that the area is a five and the other team says the area is a two, we need to discuss that because we're not seeing the waste with the same eyes. Now that we've properly prepared ahead of time, we're finally ready to start the all-important first step of SORT and get off to a strong start. 